Look out, here she comes The woman that I love It's too bad she'll never know Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel Because she has someone who makes her happy I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least I try to be Cause I hope that I'm not showing How I feel for her But she won't feel the same for me I've got this picture in my mind It's just the two of us It's finally cooled down a little bit Ah, oh, what a relief It's not as humid today It's still quite warm though But it's super calm again nice putting my feet in the water oh god I am 38 weeks now and to be quite honest I've had enough <laughs> I'm experiencing whoo, quite a lot of aches and pains now my belly is huge I just bump against everything and yeah some contractions I'm super 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 emotional the last two days I was just all over the place really and I can't really sleep anymore but yet I'm super tired but lying down even isn't nice anymore <laughs> it's just pressure everywhere just turning around in bed is a major exercise now I'm gonna actually hold my belly <laughs> lift it up <laughs> and turn around oh god I honestly enjoyed this pregnancy I really did and I think you you got that but but now there comes a the time when comfort or discomfort outweighs enjoyment and I've gotten there hopefully she'll make her way out very soon oh and I'm out of breath clearly very fast also some of the first trimester symptoms have come back I do feel a bit nauseous again and my bladder honestly I think it holds like about one milliliter at a time so I have to go to the toilet all the bloody time. It's ridiculous. Day, night, any time. So I'm glad when that's over too. <laughs> so there you go. 38 weeks pregnant. A little bit over. And yeah, it's um it's been challenging. <laughs> I have to admit. So I'm at the point now where I think, yeah, she definitely could come out now and I wouldn't be upset. And I've been thinking a lot about how this all happened, this big belly of mine. <laughs> I mean, I know how it happened, but you know, like, just Mark's and my journey, how we met. I don't think you know, we met, um, we were both travelling in South America. Both had a gap year. I started mine in Venezuela, up north, and I went all the way down south to Tierra del Fuego in Argentina. And Chile. And I had about a year, and I think about nine months in, Nine, ten months in, I met Mark in um, Mendoza, in Argentina. And I think he had only been in, into his travels for three months or something, so he still had a lot to go and I didn't have that much time left anymore. And yeah, we stayed at the same hostel and we got along really well from the start. He was, um, you know, he was this cool dude in the hostel that travels with the guitar and sings, and he could actually sing and play the guitar, he's actually a really good musician. We just fell for each other somehow. We spent about three weeks together there. And then, um, yeah, and then I had to leave. My dad was about to visit me in Buenos Aires for six weeks. Uh, went and traveled with my dad, which was awesome, by the way. It was really cool. We went to Chile and Brazil. We are in Brazil on 11th January. And, um, yeah, through Argentina, it, it was amazing. Yeah, and then um, I had to go back home soon, back to Germany to study, finish my degree. Yeah, Mark just continued traveling. And then about a year later, like we, we were out of touch and that, but then a year later I wrote an email. I wrote it to, I couldn't quite remember his email address, so I wrote it to I think three or four different email addresses that I thought might be his. 
and um, all but one came back <laughs> and the one that didn't come back actually reached him and he wrote back and then we stayed in touch ever since via, via email for the next three years almost two and a half three years and then one day he wrote that he was selling a house and he was going to come over to Germany <laughs> and he did I was so nervous I remember like he flew into to Frankfurt on the 28th I think of, of May and then he stayed there a couple of nights, got himself acclimatized and used to the time difference in that. And then he um, hopped on a train to Berlin where I lived at the time. And um, I remember how nervous I was going to the train station, picking him up there and I didn't know how it would go. We hadn't seen each other in about four years, you know. But I didn't have to be worried really because it was just absolutely fine. We, we again hit it off straight from the start, talked and talked. And yeah, and we stayed together ever since. That was the 31st of May in 2009. So we spent the next two years in Europe. Yeah, in Berlin at first, then there were some visa issues, so he had to leave the Schengen states. And we went to Turkey for about five, six months. Lived there for a little bit. And then we came back to Germany and we moved to Leipzig. And so we had dodged one, one German winter already. But the next one we couldn't dodge, and poor little Mark, he got the shock of his life. It was the longest and coldest winter in decades in Germany. <laughs> my hands are all very cold because some of the snow melted on my gloves. Oh. <laughs> so it's first snow falling, and through his first snowball, and went um, sledding, we went. We went down to Bavaria and to the mountains which was nice, he liked that, but yeah, Le Leipzig itself, is, it's all flat and grey and miserable in winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hung around there. But yeah, Mark didn't particularly enjoy it. He went to language school in that time as well, and he had his fun with that, <laughs> so he learned German in that time. And they had to, had to come up with little short stories and that, and one I filmed actually. It was about um, his dream profession when he was a little boy. <laughs> Mein Lieblingsberuf ist Hühnchenhutzer. Hören Sie meine Geschichte zu. Als ich ein Kind war, wollte ich ein Hühnchenhutzer werden. Weil es ein sehr interessanter Beruf ist. Er just made it up, it wasn't true. It was so cute. After this cold, cold winter, we really had enough. Oh, well, me too, but more Mark. He couldn't, he couldn't handle it. <laughs> so we went, um, packed our bags, and we left Germany. I left my job, and bought some tickets, and we went to Thailand for a little while. But not to stay there, just to stop over en route on our way to Australia. So on the, I remember, I remember exactly because I was hoping my little girl's going to be born that day. On the 13th of April in 2011, we arrived in Australia. So when we first got here, like we were in Perth for the first couple of weeks, I think, and then we went down south to where Mark's actually from. He's from Esperance, or near Esperance, from a farm. So we went to this farm and stayed there for about the first year almost. And it was awesome. This farm, you have no idea if you're from Europe, you have no idea how massive it all is. It's huge, like you can't even see as far as it goes. It's ridiculous. So we went there, Mark showed me around the, the farm, with this old machinery, the old sheds where he grew up. And it all made sense, his whole personality all of a sudden started to make sense to me. Like how he doesn't like crowds and, and tight spaces and that sort of stuff, you know? How he really needs quiet time for himself, like being out there on this desolate <laughs> property. Just explained it all to me. Like, he, it made sense seeing him in his natural environment, you know, <laughs> where he grew up. We even got to do um, a bit of work there, so we did seeding. So I got to drive the big bloody tractor and put seeds in the ground. It was actually really, really cool. We did that for about a month, I think it took. I drove all sorts of machinery. Pea rolling tractors, the utes. Yeah, there were sheep on the farm as well, so um, when there wasn't enough food growing on the fields, we had to give them a bit of food. So 
that sometimes we did that. Obviously there were other things that the sheep had to do as well, so they sometimes got some needles or um, had to be checked. And then after that year, we went um, back to Perth and we decided we were going to stay. And then in 2016, the first time after I've arrived in Australia in 2011, we um, went back to Germany, to Europe. It was the first time in five years that I went to see my family. My mum and dad had been here before, but I hadn't seen my grandparents, my uncles, my aunties, my cousins, no one, my brother. So we went back and got married. started over in Argentina. Just, just, I was only 20 then. No, I had turned 21. That's not true, I turned, just turned 21. And now, like, what is it? 13, 14 years later. I'm here about to start a family. It's, it's ridiculous. Makes me very happy to be about it all. It was good times, really good experiences. I'm so glad I met Mark. I'm so glad everything went the way it went. But coming from a tiny little town in East Germany and now sitting here with all the freedom in the world, this is ideal, absolutely ideal. I'm sure she'll have a good life. I'm sure we'll have a good life. Anyway, so there you go. That is our story. <laughs> in case you've wondered, I don't know if I'm going to make another video before um, I give birth. If not, I'll see you next time with little baby. <laughs> oh. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have just as great a life as I do. <laughs> and if not, do something about it. <laughs> all right, see ya, Cheers. bye bye. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!